Hello guys, I'm Alim Al Karim. You could reach me, me at alimkarim.com. Today I'm going to talk about ASP.NET MVC Basics for beginners. It's going to be a little bit big video for beginners who want to run an ASP.NET MVC. So it's going to be very detailed, what you need to know as a beginner. So I'm assuming that you know C-sharp OOP programming database uh, concepts and few of the programming skills with collections and so on. So I'm in Visual Studio, let's uh, start with a new project. Here from web, I'm going to select the ASP.NET web application and give a name of my project. And let's say it's simple MVC app. And that's going to be our namespace. And for the folders, I'm going to choose this path and uh, this folder will be uploaded to GitHub. So if you uh, look at the description, you could get the files from the GitHub. Uh, I'm going to leave it as empty, both of those and create it. And here, uh, it's quite com confusing uh, for beginner actually. Click on MVC and you're going to see that these things are checked. So it doesn't matter where you pick, whatever you like, whatever the features that you want, you can just check those and add those to your project. It's not like you have to add it at first and then you cannot add it. You can add it at any time you want. However, at the beginning, if you add those things, then uh, a lot of the reference will be added by default. So you don't have to go through and do things. So for beginners, I think uh, checking one of those will be the best way to go. And since we are doing MVCs, I'm, I'm just choosing the MVC one. Then OK. So here, our first project is created. So I have our, uh, my con congratulations. If I run it without debugging, Congratulations, we have done it. So first time, it, it will take some time to load. Don't worry about it. If you click on the links, you'll see some nice URLs. And if you look at the project, there are actually a couple of folders. And uh, the MVC actually stands for Model, View, and Controller. And the M, uh, the model, actually represents the data where you put your data information something like that and view is your client layer where you actually you're seeing the things these things this is actually the view and uh, the controller which actually controls that uh, how to get to the view that's the simplest example the idea of the MVC is convention over configurations if you create any controller the convention would be the controller name and then the method name that's the idea if you just go to the home controller and if you see that there, there are actually three methods so there are actually these three methods and each of these methods returns a view and the view would be placed in the views folder with the same controller name with the same name of the method. This is the convention. Without looking at any configuration, I know based on the convention that the file should be there. So this is how MVC got more popular because uh, many developers could write things differently. So rather than doing that, what if we have a convention where people would know that here's the things. So that's the idea. If I create another one of the method, let's say public string, here you are, you're seeing that it's action result rather than sending an action result I'm sending a string and I'm saying it hello just make keep it simple in the hello I'm just sending it hello world that's it so if you just build it now in the controller so I know uh, there is a convention no configuration I haven't done any configuration so if I just say hello I should reach that method that's the idea and I got it I'm just sending a string that's why it's set sending the whole string However, here you are seeing the view. So that's why it's actually returning a view. And the view is consist of HTML. It's actually a razor view, which actually consists of C sharp and your HTML. But whole idea is uh, ultimate result would be an HTML. If you are good with HTML, you could make anything. So here we are in our first method. So rather than sending a just hello, I'm going to send a HTML this time. Only the H1 tag, because H1 tags are bold bolder than the simple ones after just rewriting things I also have to build it because if you don't build it you'll not see the progress because it will pulling it from the previous build 
I am here using the start without uh, debugging, so I don't have to run it, the, run the project over and over again. So if you click on this one, start with debugging, then you might have to run the project over and over again. So there are two differences. So if you go do this debugging, you will find this start without debugging. So I put it in there for uh, my fast experience. If I just uh, refresh it, you're going to see that this is in bold. That's the primary idea. Actually, this view is actually returning HTML. So how it's uh, actually returning the whole thing? Because here I am only seeing the h1 hello tag. However, in the view, if I just go there, there is only this simple view. There is no navigation or headers like this. But it's actually uh, displaying those things. So how it's going to happen? Primary idea of the view when you actually call it it first go to this share folder and then it goes to this view start folder uh, view start dot html file and in this csHTML file it actually looks for the view this tilde sign means the root of the project and then the views folder this views folder and then shared the shared folder and then underscore layout.cshtml so first thing it picks is this one and it has everything for HTML HTML header icon bars navigation and everything here is the navigations for each of the URLs and so on and here you're going to see that render body and render body is going to render this view by convention when you say this view it's going to go there and then pick out this layout and in the layout it says the render body in the render body is going to put this content contract contract content or about content the idea is like this let's actually make our own view to return a view we could actually uh, set it as ac action result so when you actually set it as action result it's actually looking for a view or something like that some type of similar type of data we make our next example view and this time we're going to uh, actually make it our own view rather than copying from this one. To do that, we just right click on the method and then create a view. Just say example view. We keep it as it is. We're not changing any con convention yet. Example view, in the example view, we just try to write something meaningful to us so that we understand that view is coming as we have told earlier. Example HTML view, let's say. So let's just build it and the convention would be if I'm in the, in the controller, so example view. So home slash example view. This time, rather than sending a string, it should give me those headers and things like that. So that's the idea. So we have done it successfully. Now it's time to do some work with the database. So far, we have understand how controllers work, how convention works. It's good, but we need to create some database. That's our idea. So to work with database, you need to create some classes in models. There are three ways that you could work with MVC. Uh, one is code first, uh, code first, uh, database first. I say DB first, keep it simple. And the last one is model first. Either one you choose, it's actually based on your preference, whatever you like. And uh, some of the confusions uh, arises among people that in database first you need a pre-existent database that's actually not the idea in database first you always need the database database first you're designing the database first it doesn't matter that if you have a old database it doesn't matter it doesn't work like that so if you like to design databases then you, you pick database first if you like to do code first coding first then you do the code first so whatever you pick the ultimate result will be same uh, this is actually said by Microsoft the Eric Miller who actually developed the entity framework and um, we're going to do things with entity framework so that's why it's actually relevant here I'm going to use code first I also have a video of database first so if you like database designing so you could watch that video and work with it to do code first you just have to create a new class it's nothing different you are, if you know object-oriented programming it's just a simple class to do that, uh, we're going to crea create a person class, the basic example that everyone gives. In a person, so these are the short terms in uh, uh, Visual Studio. So if you write p prop, P-R-O-P, and then hit tab, you're going to get this autocomplete. I'm going to keep my things as convention. By convention, if you want to have a ID, primary key ID field in your database table you just name your column or name your property as id when you actually build a system with this 
So convention will automatically know that this is your primary key. So if you want to have some different name, then you can also choose your primary key by having an annotation of key. It really depends on what kind of person you are or what type of things that you like. But I like to go with the convention rather than changing things. So there are actually two ways to keep the convention. One way is keeping it as ID. Another way is keep it as class name and end it with ID. So there are two ways. So both of those will be pick it as a primary key without having this annotation. It will know it by convention. That's the idea. So when it creates the database, it already knows that this is the primary key. It's going to create the indexes and so on. Next, we need some uh, fields for, let's say, first names. We're keeping it as a string, first name. Let's say I want to have last name. And let's say date of birth. Just simple. I have done nothing fancy. So next thing, we need to actually tell it that it's going to be uh, connected with a database. To do that, we need to create another class. And this class has to be uh, created, inherited from a DB context class. I name it as context entities. Context entities, but you could name it whatever that makes you happy. There is no convention. When you say DB context, you are going to see this IntelliSense. So you're going to importing uh, the IntelliSense entity. And then uh, if you write CTOR, you're going to get the constructor for this class. And in the constructor, you could actually uh, call the base constructor as well. So if you just keep it this way, it would be just fine. But if you have any, let's say connection string, you could have connection strings in your web config, which actually tells which database to look at. So if you don't give a connection string, if you just keep it blank, it's going to create the database with your existing SQL Server, uh, SQL Express management system or SQL Server. So whatever system that you have installed, it's going to be connected with this one. So if you want to be explicit, you just give it a name and name would be defined in here. That's the idea. We're not going to define it. We're going to keep it as the convention goes. Here we're going to actually uh, put the database tables to do to add the database table, we need a data DB set object, and in the DB set is a generic object. Here we're going to just say the our table name uh, or the type of thing that we want as a DB set, the person, and person we would like to keep it as a table people. So in the database, it's going to save the table as people. So far, so good. Now, I have to tell uh, my package manager to create that database. To do that, I'm in my package manager console. And if you don't have that package manager console, you could just go in the Nucut package manager and you could select this one. So you, you'll get this one. First one, I will try to write the enable migration. We'll see enable migration. So I might get an error. That's fine because I have two actually uh, DB context this one this one is actually given default by the system I do not want to modify or change anything here keep it simple I'm just going to use this parameters as it says context name and then we're going to use this one our context entities that's our idea now it's going to create the database uh, so my database is created so if I go to SQL management studio and to have the database same as my code, I just have to run the uh, database update command. There is an update database command. And here also I have to actually uh, make it specific because I have two. Okay, no problem. Just try to update it. In the migration, I, I'd like to keep it as true. And then try again. Okay, done. If I now go to my SQL Express, here, I'm going to see that simple MVC app.model.context. I have that database. Here, as you see that uh, the name of the database is not that good. It's actually picking everything up. So if you want your own convention or your own database name, you just write the connection string. That's the idea. Database column is created. Person ID is my primary key, first name ID, and so on. Date time is also is given. So here, as you can see that uh, the first name is given as n 4 char so n 4 char is a unicode character 
system. So supports Unicode. So max means it's going to support 4,000 characters, which is a huge length. But I don't want my first name to be that long. Uh, to make it actually uh, simple or restricted, we could actually use these data annotations. Here there is an annotation called a string realm. And let's say I want it to be 40 characters. And last name also I want to be 40 characters. And after that, I just have to run the update database. If you just look at there, it says that there is going to be data loss because I have minimized the data length from max to actually 40 characters. So there is going to be a data loss. To do that by forcefully, you just have to add a force parameter and it's going to uh, change everything. So here, if I actually refresh my database, database and nvarchar 40 seems nice and if you want anything to be actually not now you could just add a annotation called required so if you add that and if we again update it we're going to see that see that it's not now okay so uh, that's the basic idea so it was maybe null before so so let's really try it this one date time is going to be not now all the time so this one so we just refresh it yes not now so date time is going to be uh, by default not now so I want first name also be not now so so by doing this you could actually modify your database which I actually don't like that much, but uh, this is the simplest way to show it uh, quickly. So our database is done. So now we need the CRUD operations, create, read, update, delete. To do that, I'm going to use that controller creation. And from this, I'm going to choose the MVC5 controller with read, write actions. And I'm going to write it as people. So my controller would be people controller so the convention would be my website name website name then people and then my actions is the method name so here every actually action is written but there is no actually code to actually make it happen directly so you have to write that or we have to write that to make it work the first thing is to get it touch with the database we have to create that context that's the idea that we have to think of this context as the whole database so first I'm going to create that context we could do it privately as well so let's just create it as context as DP new done so in the index page what I want is show the detail or the list of the items that's actually there as a person to do that I'm just going to has the people and then say to list so to list when you actually execute that to list it's going to give me the data of all people in the database and put it in there so it's going to just execute that SQL query behind the scene select a star from people and then uh, make it make it all all to the object oriented uh, person here I will have a collection of person so it, it would be a collection or list of a person so that's the idea so I could actually uh, evaluate through it and in the view I'm just going to pass the people that's the idea so my view is not there so if you just look at it there is no view from the people class so here I'm going to create a view here I also have a template option from the template option I'm going to choose the list and I also have some options uh, to choose the model and I'm going to choose the person model and in the context I'm going to choose my context and then it's not going to be partial Persian means do not add the other uh, headers uh, or the navigation or things like that that's what I have shown earlier do not add those things if I actually choose it as partial but I want to add those things so I'm leaving it as empty so if I now look at my index.cshtml, I can see that there is a nice HTML representation is already generated based on my um, model. So it automatically generates or 
checks out that it's a person because I've selected from the generation so it's already going to be pick out every of the properties from the model very nice and very detailed and it's going to actually pull it up from the model is going to be what you have put it there so it's I immutable so it means it's a type of list and from that type of list we're going to uh, pick each one and from each one we're going to displaying the data first name last name and so on for uh, there is also going to be edit details and delete links and uh, based on that de delete links delete links so if you just uh, go to this one this action link it's actually uh, returns um, returns something like this a href so in the href there is going to be the link so link is actually given or generated by the idea that what the parameter you pass so first one is the name of the link so what do you want to be passed in here so what would be their display so you could write a display so whatever you write in here it's going to be here as your display and next uh, which action that you wanted to actually uh, pick from so when you do not have any controller specific it's going to pick your own controller where you have actually uh, generated it so it's going to pick this people controller but if you want to go to a different controller different so you could actually use there are actually other parameter control name so if you want to go to let's say home controller you just say home so then the route will be like this that first one would be home and then there is the edit because you are picking this action so that's the idea about this action links and since there is an ID so it's going to give the ID at the bottom at the uh, last you can say so how it's going to be generated so now we're going to talk about that so it's actually generated from this route config.css CS so in here you're going to see that there is a basic default route and in this basic default route it says that there's going to be controller there's going to be action and there is going to be the uh, ID so action represents the methods and controller represents the controllers these so now if I just remove these curly braces then it means something different uh, when you don't have any curly brace it means a hard-coded value like this one controller so if I put it like this then it al always expects the controller hard-coded value not the controller from these one of those not that so it's going to look for the hard query value it could be uppercase lowercase doesn't matter and then an action means the method any of the method and uh, by default it's going to pick the home controller that's the idea so by default you could actually give it there so for the first time when it runs if I don't give anything so it knows that it has to go to the index page because the by default is the index so that's how it's actually picking that index uh, method so in the in the home controller the index method is picked without saying the index slash index so by default it's going to be always index so if you just write controller name it's going to pick the action by default as index so that's the idea so if you want you could actually uh, make your own convention you could act add your new routes that's the idea we don't actually want to break things we keep it as it is as you can see when I don't have anything it's going to go to the index um, method in the home controller and uh, let's say I go to my people and I'm go when I go to the people it automatically picks up that index view and if I actually rename it and it will make more sense if we actually rename it rename it and if I refresh it we're going to get an error that's the idea and it actually tells you how it's actually looks for so first these 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 are actually look for and then it's actually looks for this CS HTML so none of these exists so that's why it's actually uh, giving this error so we know that where the file should be so we're renaming it and let's say we give it a people index so that it makes more sense I just refresh it so here we have our people indexes now when we actually create the create button it's actually showing that people slash create so if I just go to my people controller there is create method and here there no code is written so if I just click on it I should get the same error 
So I have to actually create that create uh, view. Do you do that? I'm just using that view, create view, and then I am choosing my person. Person, I'm choosing the template from create view. So it's going to give me a look like create view. Now I just have to actually don't have to build because it's uh, actually view view actually dynamic you don't have to build it build it here we have a nice view however if we just find things we don't have any validations because we have set it as uh, 40 characters there is no validations we're not getting any validations or anything like that do you have these validations there is actually a jquery uh, jquery plugin uh, actually here in the scripts folder is this one so if we just uh, put it in our uh, HTML so if you just go to the HTML there is none there is these things and these things are actually coming from this layout so we don't want this validation all the time we want it when we are actually creating things or modifying things then and here as you can also see there is another thing called render section and required false A render section means these are actually optional when you need it you just put it there and the codes that you put in this uh, render section uh, will be actually situated in here or replaced in here rather than this one so that's the idea and these actually scripts are actually bundled minified and bundled uh, to optimize the performance and this is actually done here in the bundle config file in the bundle config there is actually the bundles for these bootstrap and bootstrap contains these scripts and slash uh, tell the sign means the root of the folder and then the scripts and then so on when, when actually in the layout when it's actually saying bootstrap it's going to pull out these two scripts as you can see that's the idea if we want to add that validation it's also actually there jquery val so we just have to write this line of code section script section means that uh, it's going to create this section render section and uh, then here we're just putting this script and we're just calling it from this variable that's the idea so there could be multiple scripts so whatever multiple scripts is there is going to be pulled out here to optimize the web performance because it's actually making many requests to the many files and uh, to have better performance in web uh, you have to minimize the request in web to do that we could actually use this bundle table dot enable optimization equals true when you use that if you just build now build now and just refresh the code so I'm assuming that you already know HTML that's the idea so as you can see that it's actually minimized so here are actually two files it's now minimized to one file and everything is minimized so if I actually uh, switch it to off or just make it comment out and rebuild it and if I just run it now scripts are there and if you click on it there are also comments so it's not really optimized when you actually enable the optimization you also have this concatenation and this minimization and everything is there so that's the idea of the optimization if I now refresh this page and now if I start typing typing when I actually go to another uh, fill it's going to say that it's not a valid fill so I'm getting a good validations by adding just one JavaScript plugin that's the idea now we have seen the create view it's working fine however here you can see the two create methods in an object oriented programming uh, if you have uh, same two methods like this like this you're going to have here but we have a parameter however uh, the web actually looks for the convention so as you can see the both places there is actually people slash create people slash create however there is a notation that HTTP post so if I just remove that one and this could happen to you trust me many people have faced this so if I again try to actually uh, reload it I have to actually build it first so whatever you change in cs.cs file you have to build the code but whatever change you make in cshtml you don't have to build it so if I just run it you're going to see an error and that actually says that it's ambiguous because it doesn't know where to go from because 
when you don't have any annotation it means it could be work as post or it could work as get both so to minimize that uh, confusion we actually add this HTTP post now if we create on this one this create button then there is going to be a web post that's the idea in every system it's going to be same in PHP and so on there is nothing different nothing fancy an idea that how it happens is like right there you actually create a form and then you give action where the data of the inputs so there is going to be the input fields these are the input fields that's are actually displayed there these are the input fields whatever the data of the input fields will, will going to be posed at this URL the MVC will know that this is a post method when it, you are clicking on the create it's now the post method and then it's going to put the data in here not there this one and each of the inputs will have a name property this name property not the ID ID is not relevant here name is the important one each of the input will have a name name property and based on that name property the fields are going to be sent that's the main idea here um, if I just uh, put a debug point because I like to debug uh, when I actually show these things now I'm running in as debug mode I could also run it from here because when debug mode is attached it uh, it is attached with the uh, assembly so it doesn't matter where you actually put it it's going to be always be debugged or be breakpoint there so if I just pay, put it Alim Karim something like that and uh, let's say one 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 and here I'm going to hit the breakpoint so if I just uh, hover my mouse over I'm going to see uh, there uh, actually a better way to see is with the add watch method I like to have the quick watch I like this one better so in the quick watch in the results I'm going to see that there is first name last name date of birth if I just go to the base and then uh, results view uh, all keys and base and then array and then this one and then this one here so you're going to see the values so there are actually long list of things that you're seeing that you could get the value whatever the value is passed it's actually there there are actually easier way to get to there not like this but I'm actually like to show you that how it's going to happen there are actually many ways the better way to show is like this request and the name of the field so if I'm looking for first name just write first name I get the value that's the primary idea so if I need the last name I just say last name last name this is how the form post works it works also same in PHP or any other language there is nothing different but uh, the magical things in MVC is that you don't have to pick everything like this that you don't have to let's say like first name first name and then request request and then the first name you don't have to do that okay so there are better ways to handle in MVC the first way is to pr parameter your name so if you say string first name same name as the input fields so string last name and let me just put a big breakpoint there and we don't need this one actually keep a breakpoint there and if we just run the debugger again and remove other tabs so now I just say Alim say Kareem and let's put it as 111 now in the breakpoint if I just hover over the first name and last name I don't have to do things like this request all the fields that you put in there is always going to be parsed and give the values in your to your parameters in a very efficient manner so that's very nice in MVC so there's another very nice feature rather than this one which is if you have uh, classes then you could just cast it as class person so the input fields it's going to submit the input fields. so in the class that you have selected if there is any input fields matches with the property of any class if any of the input fields fields that has been submitted uh, from this create if matches with these properties any of the properties then it will be automatically pursed and give it to my person object that's far better so that's what we want and to create and save it in the database uh, we just have to add it 
that's it so uh, by adding this to the people db it's going to add it there but it's not going to be executed as uh, insert into insert into query not yet so when you actually run this command save changes then it's going to look for how many data that you have added or modified whatever you did so this uh, here we are adding so it's going to execute that insert query here so there could be multiple so if you ha I have added 10 person to this DB table DB table then there would be 10 insert commands will be executed by this save changes you don't have to do anything more that's a very nice feature and uh, in our web uh, in our form there is already validation in client side but a client could actually send data to fiddler or any hacking tool but as our as a developer it's our job to verify if the data integrity is safe or not to do that you could actually use this uh, model state property is valid is valid so if you run through this you automatically know that it's actually uh, successful so when we are successful we're going to this index page index of this controller we're going to there so if we do not do not uh, find it valid we're going to send this same thing to the client again so whatever you put it there it's not really valid and we're sending it the view again so that you could change it and give it back to us something valid that's the idea now if we try to build it we're going to see some errors and to solve that error what I'm going to do is uh, put my person up there and if there is any error then uh, I'm going to just throw an exception exception that cannot save data something simple so if you now try to build we're successful let's run our project and try to save our data okay so uh, let me just go from people.create let's try alim frame so if we are successful then we will be here so it's uh, coming from database because we already have done our index method so we were successful up until now so now um, what we want is having a uh, edit method so if you just go to this edit um, it's giving something different because uh, we actually modified this uh, to show you something different this one so let's just remove this and let's have a nice URL like everything else so it says that edit slash one one is my ID when I'm actually modifying it I'm up here so this ID is going to come from this URL slash one this ID is going to become here and this is actually configured in here this ID and ID is also set as ID is optional so you don't have to always give the ID and if you don't pass the action it's going to assume that it's index if you don't pass controller it's going to assume that it's uh, home so that's the idea from the config by default the ID is going to be here uh, by this convention slash one uh, controller slash action slash ID so we're gonna have the ID here so uh, the next concept is uh, searching it from the database and get it in our um, system so db dot people dot find so when I actually execute this command I'm going to get a person and behind the scene entity framework so when we actually run these things uh, there's entity framework running the SQL against link to SQL it's going to run uh, select top uh, one and then the uh, star from start from table name people so a query like this where uh, primary key person ID person ID is equals to ID so this is the idea so when you actually run this this uh, um, query is actually uh, run through the SQL server so after that if we have a person exactly have a person uh, we're going to actually pass it through there and the view is not actually created yet so there is the error so let's create the view edit from this edit template and here we're going to select the person 
that's it so we have our edit view and inside this edit view uh, now if we just build it click on edit it should bring the data of the person which we have clicked on there and put it right there that's it so we just did a little bit of coding and we get everything there after that if the save button is clicked on here again the same procedure the post is going to be happening here so here we're, we're going to say that it's a person person type of object so whatever is passed is going to be first and then if we just try to update it in the database because uh, when this method is running when every method every one of the single method is runs there is no connection with this one but where we're adding but uh, the data context doesn't have that person here so even though there is a person object we have searched from the database here in the get method however when it's posting the DB object doesn't contain the data of this one so first thing what we have to do is um, tell our DB entity entity to uh, add this one because this is not exist in our DB entity the collection doesn't have that so we're adding it we're not searching it we're adding it and uh, by explicitly we're sending it as a state and we're saying it it's going to be modified so here you can see that there are many states so you could have unchanged detached detachments whatever change you made I don't want to save it in the database so here I want to save the changes so I'm saying modified if it uh, set it as modified so database is not is going to know explicitly that it's not an addition it's a modification and uh, when we actually execute that DV dot save changes database is going to execute the update command not the insert update command that's the whole idea so before doing that what we want is model state dot is valid so if it is valid then we're actually saving it and we're actually going to our uh, index so if it doesn't then we're actually sending it the person to that edit view and we also want to throw an error if we cannot save it that's it Let's build it so after building let's try to make it as new query so every time when you first run the ASP pages it takes some time because everything goes to binary first so after running it few more times it goes very fast so as you can see that we are able to modify the database by these few lines of code it's really really nice and here comes the delete part so delete part is easy so uh, it's actually uh, same as this one so code I'm going to just pick it there and in the view I just wanted to create the view it should be created from this delete template person that's it we're done when delete is clicked on this uh, submit button this input submit so delete is going to push it there again there so we want this person person and here well we just wanted to detach it uh, rather than inputting it we're going to detach it so uh, sorry remove it so delete it and save changes so it will actually execute the delete command and if we're not successful then we could actually uh, throw an exception Finally, if we are successful, we still wanted to, let's say, we react to this one, this view again. So there is something wrong in the view, but there is uh, no way currently that we could say that this is wrong because there is no chance that there could be wrong because you were just deleting it. Everything is already there. You're not modifying it. So there is a less chance that you could have a modified data unless you are trying to hack it in from somewhere else. That's a different story. So after that, uh, if I just click on this remove or delete button, 
I can see a nice view. So if I click on this one, it's actually removed. So because next time I'm not seeing any uh, valid data, so I might have missed something. So if valid something something something. So if I just go to my people database directly, I don't see any data. So it's there. So it's not really removed. Okay, let's try to debug it, and let's see what's going on wrong. Okay. Okay, so as you can see that uh, I have, I've tried to actually try to have the is validate. So in is validate, if I just go through, you can see that it's actually false. So if you just go more, uh, you will have all the keys and you'll have all the values. So if you go to each value, you'll see that errors. So there is an error, first time is required. So I actually don't need to do that in remove part because we're not sending any uh, information to actually remove it to just pass it as a person uh, similar to the person just pass it to as a post then we're just removing it no, no actual data actually uh, so uh, the better way should be uh, like this if you have person so the better way should be like this uh, finding the person because we only have the ID if we just go to the delete uh, URL we should see an ID okay so ID is not there so whatever we actually wanted to pass uh, we could actually write it there so HTML dot text input hidden fill so we want hidden and uh, hidden for so there are two types of every input so one is for so for gives you a nice intelligence of each one of your uh, properties so we just want to have this ID person ID so rather than uh, getting a person we just wanted to have int of ID uh, person ID person ID and um, it's giving us an error so the better way would be again try to have a person so again, it will try to parse, but we only get the person ID. And from the person ID, we actually want to find the person. Find the person. And uh, from the person, find the person. And person dot person ID. Person ID. So person ID is only there, but not the whole thing. So we're getting the actual person and then removing it from the uh, database, setting as, as a flag to remove it. And then we're actually removing it. That's the idea. So let's try to do it again. Okay, let's run it. Okay, so now if we try to go to the person and remove and delete slash one, see the ID. And then if we just click on this, yes, person is removed successfully. So we have done it and let's say create another one let's say alim2 and cream just keep it simple and fast that's it so we're able to actually create data modify data, and so on details you do it by yourself i don't want to bore you so th this is all basic ideas that how mvc work however if you just look at it we have done only few things we also write very simple codes, not many complicated codes, not any SQL codes. Everything is done uh, by our object-oriented model and entity framework. Every, every framework is helping us a lot. However, uh, if you just look at this one, there is no pagination and there is no nice searching system. So if you want to actually build anything like that, it takes some time. So, uh, and it's not really that much nicely formatted. So if you want to format it, it also takes some time but however I want uh, to f I, I actually forgot to show one thing because when you have these uh, fields as you can see the name of the fields are first name which doesn't look good uh, doesn't look good anywhere so if you want to actually change the uh, outlooking and fill uh, you could actually go to the class and change it like this display display so there are actually other properties inside display annotation so name could be one I could say first name space like that however there is another annotation called 
display name which is under sorry i made a mistake which is under components i think component model okay so this one okay so here we you could also write the name first name from display name these are the two ways that you could actually change the display name so when you have both of those uh, this one will win it not because that this one is on top this one is going to win um, that's the order so it doesn't matter if you put it right this or put it on top doesn't matter uh, this one is going to win all the time so let me show you a demo so if I just refresh it once you refresh it it's going to be refreshed in every page so you don't have to go and change everywhere it's that is smart to put uh, everything in the right place first name this one is winning not this one so if I just remove this one and again build it if I just refresh again so as you can see that uh, when display is not there then this one will be shown and it's not like it's only here so if I go to the person now people now you can see that name is also uh, different here and if I go to the create page it's also different there so this is how MVC actually works so it's fan out so how it's actually fan out if you just go there it actually says display name for rather than this uh, thing or saying it as first name with strongly uh, type it's actually sh says that display name for this so this method is going to figure out what its annotation is if there is none then the field name is going to be displayed that's the idea so before wrapping up the session I would like to show you a magic so whatever we have done so far this one hour it also can be done by few seconds and the way we did it is to teach you how MVC work and uh, the detailed things that you could do with MVC however uh, there is another option if you go to the controller we have a people controller so let's make a people controller too you could make any name controller so this time I'm choosing MVC 5 controller with views using entity framework so using entity framework if I choose that one and now I just give my model name which is a person and then context which my database and uh, the name of the controller let's say I name it as two people two so if I just add it you're going to see everything is done for us we don't actually have to write anything everything is done for us very nice so now if I just run my project So let's go to people and people two. So you see the exact same thing. If I go to the add new and you're seeing the display name as well, everything is fan out everywhere. So Alim three, let's try Alim three. Green data bird and here I also d d didn't even add the plugin uh, validation plugin but if I actually keep it as blank and try to do it it is going to verify that it has a, a invalid fill so plugin is also added we don't have to do that so everything is there so everything is working also details is there and if we just try to remove first one remove so everything is working so everything we have done so far it can be done in one second that's the idea but the reason that I have done it so that you understand that how things work that was the main focus and uh, another thing that I would like to add to this uh, project is a searching feature because there is no searching feature let's say our first one I we would like to add the searching feature so if I go to the first one it should look same so let's say after that we after that we want to add the searching feature and we don't want it to be very uh, lucrative or something like that we just wanted to add the searching feature so if you remember you just have to add a form because form knows where to pose the things so let's add an action URL so in the action URL you could just say that posted in people people URL slash um, search so we're searching in people controller uh, people controller and then search method method uh, there everything would be uh, sent so method for that would be post 
and to have a search type input we just create a type equal text input text input and that's it and we could actually give it a placeholder which will give a nice watermark thing so search dot 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 so if I just uh, refresh the people you'll see there is a search bar it doesn't look so nice but just bear with me we could actually add a class uh, from control and bootstrap will give us a nice uh, control and if I wanted to put it in the right corner I could use the right pull right pull right CSS put it in the right side looks nice right whatever we have done it also can be done in MVC way so you could use the using uh, using form so if I just grab the code because I don't want to write things HTML begin so this is the idea of the form you could exactly if you want to post to the same um, action that you have came from so we have came from index as you know this uh, index view so we have came from index view so if you just write write this then the action it, it will automatically create this line of code automatically create this from tag automatically and close it up there so whatever we have done manually it can be done like this and uh, if you don't pass anything it will assume that you are uh, going to pass the url to index post it to index that's the main idea so if you want to pass it at this URL, uh, you could actually use these parameters. There are several parameters. The first one is action. So we want to pass it to search. And since we're using the same controller, we actually don't need to specify the uh, controller name. But if you want, you can. And you could also uh, specify the method. So if you want something get, get goes by the URL and post gets invisibly uh, with posting. That's the idea. So for now we just wanted to keep it simple so whatever we have done by this line it can be done by this this is MVC way here I have done a mistake so um, if I just go through the parameters you're going to see that only one parameter except uh, expects for an object and route values route values are different not like this object uh, you have to create uh, route values like this new so uh, that's why it's not complaining because object could handle uh, strings as well and the idea of checking is to refresh it and go to the inspect element and you're going to see that it's not the URL that we're looking for we want to have people slash search that's what we're looking for and uh, to have that we could just say the controller name people that's it so the method is not there I have resharper installed so it's actually red I already know so we have to m create the method here so let's create the method I already have a code snippet that I have written before so the idea of the method is whatever pass in the query here is the query name it would be automatically passed and after that uh, we're going to split it by the by the space and we're going to have a list of strings where it is actually divided by the spaces after that uh, I'm actually doing a link operation link and lambda ex expression so I I do have an entire video on entity framework and lambda expression if you like you can check it out then it would make much more make sense and I'm doing a where inside of where where it actually expects to have a true false either true or false the first thing you write is actually the every single entity name that if it is a people then I'm saying it person so person means that every single item in people are uh, represents by this person so uh, again I am actually taking this um, split texts so it is also a list of text so if you just go there string arrays so by this string arrays if any returns true any returns true so any of those if exist by the first name first name so when you actually use this contains first name dot contains it actually generates a like query so if you are familiar with the SQL then you'd know it so it actually generates some like query something like that we're, we're going to also see the queries that which actually generate so we also have or there so it could be either first name search or last name search we don't know whatever um, item that we get we put it in the people since we already have list view so we're going to use it so in the view rather than saying it just like this view people people then it would expect for a view of search 
but we have a list view already which is actually the index if you see that index we're just passing it as the people object model in the index of a uh, of the people it actually holds it as an immutable and immutable list of collection we already have it so why rewrite or remake the things we already have reuse it to reuse it we just we, we can just name the view name which is index so it's going to use this view instead of this exists uh, the convention we're breaking the convention and we are passing the people that's the idea sometimes it's a good practice sometimes it's a bad practice depending on the code that you are delivering so if you think of dry it's actually dry we're not repeating uh, anything however if you're thinking about the convention then it's actually breaking it so either way it's a trade-off so you have to think about it let me just refresh it and the first thing i'm going to check the uh, form url that where it's actually posting so it's actually not done yet so yes so we're posting at uh, search so if I now try to have Alim it's it works so if I say Alim Karim let's open the SQL profiler so that we could see our searches that what's actually going on let me add new different name let's say Lice Roman and say 111 or let me add another more. Let's say cream, do, let's say John Doe. Sure. So we have three things. So if I write John, we get the John. If we write Doe, we get the Doe. If you say John Doe, because there could be, let's say, uh Jane Doe something like that so if, if you say Doe we're getting both but if you want to specific the John Doe you say John Doe we have made a mistake John Doe so okay so it's actually oring so we're not getting any beneficial so it's actually or so let me start a query and uh, query profiler and we're gonna understand that what's actually going on uh, if I remember correctly uh, it's actually going on in SQL Express let's run it every time let's say I try Alim Karim actually made those queries so uh, if I just go there uh, see the query how it's actually written so Alim Karim so it's actually uh, also passed it also passed as a parameter so so that no one can hack into your system so we could actually pause it and see that what's actually happened in the SQL query. Cream and then from, so it's actually not the like query. Uh, however, uh, it actually does it like this. Character index by like this. Uh, however, the end result is actually the similar kind. So the ultimate idea is when you use the um, contains, uh, contains actually does this thing. So um, they actually rewritten the query uh, what they think the best way to do it but the ultimate result is actually the same the like operator that's the idea thank you for watching the video i am alimul kareem i'm alimul kareem and you could actually reach me me at alimkareem.com and you could uh, get the project urls by this uh, link or by this url or you could just get search by uk git then you get in my repository and find the um, find this project and you will get the project files that's it thank you